Epic has just made a live stream with Birdo going over the new Fortnite Discover API. And in this video, I'm going to break down the entire live stream they did. So let's just get to it. The first question that they asked was, what is an API and how can it be used day to day by creators? At the most uh, basic level, uh, I'd say it's just a way to really simply retrieve and pass information to systems. Um, common, the common analogy that's always out there is like if you're at a fast food drive-thru and you see a really simple menu and you have to speak a phone, uh, you can pass your order there. There'll be a waiter inside that coordinates everything related to passing an order in the kitchen and all that stuff. So as a consumer on the other side, it's a really simple interface and you get things uh, back out of it really simply. And in our case, what that translates to what we're passing through is, um, is data, data around the engagement uh, of our games, uh, retention of our games. Uh, so you could ask a simple, simply how many players are playing this type of game right now and get that a really simple answer without knowing the you know, mechanics. So just for some context, if you don't know, this API allows us to track many different things like retention, favorites on maps and everything like that. It's on the screen right now. This is currently public for every single Epic game and it's going to be public soon for, for every single Fortnite island, I think on the 9th of June. Now again, like you just explained, an API is kind of like something that's, it's a kitchen, you know? You order something and it just cooks it up for you and it delivers the thing you wanted. In this case, stats about Fortnite islands. Now, we've never actually had this level of transparency with Epic or Fortnite, really, <laughs> ever. So, it's really cool how we're going to be able to just see this. It's it's going to be pretty crazy. It's hard to get super excited about an API. So, hopefully, people can get excited about the outcomes of the API. I think structured access, like open access to, to data in, in every aspect of life generally is a good thing. Um, I just think the gaming industry in, is generally not. Um, historically, like, they've been, it's, it's been very, we haven't been building, like, platforms, like, long-lasting ecosystems. And I think the uh, object at, at Epic is to foster long-term investment and, and the long-term trust in, in an ecosystem and the best way we believe to build trust is, is through transparency and data is a key key part of that. Though so I think one of the big problems with Fortnite and how they were building the ecosystem is that they're just kind of waiting like not to throw up numbers or anything but look at Roblox okay this is our competitor and they have 10 times more players than us. Kind of gives you the question what is Roblox doing right that Fortnite is doing wrong? Ultimately in my eyes you've heard me say it all the time but I don't think people who join the ecosystem can find stuff they want to play there's a lot of barriers to entry to the ecosystem like the downloading the game it's like it's like what like it's 120 gigabytes on my computer we, we desperately need thin client which is hopefully coming soon again discover is just a barrier to finding stuff you want to play and etc etc you know what i mean i've said all before i think for a time there epic was relying on big events to grab people's attention but ultimately what they should have been probably been doing was just building loyalty trust you know because the problem they had when they did the Big Bang and also the other one, I forget, was that the, the actual metaverse, the systems in place that were going to support that were not good. So it ended up just failing. Now, what this shows me, though, is that Epic are actually learning their lessons, okay? And they actually are finally probably coming to reason that maybe their methods so far have been not very good. Anyways, let's move on. Like, we published CCU of every island, started two, two and a half years ago, something like that. Like, and I think to some extent, we're so accustomed to like data is, is secret, right? Like it's like my success is secret and only to me. The truth is like, so when, when we went to all the first party teams, like the Battle Royale team, it's like, we're gonna, we're gonna show like how many people are playing Battle Royale. What if we have a bad season? Well, you have a bad season, you'll do better next year. <laughs> like, and, and I think that like, we know internally, like if we're having a bad season, like what, what harm is that from saying that like, like publicly? And, and, and on the flip side, when we have huge, like huge seasons, like does that, does that help you? We believe it helps to see like, what, where do people go? They vote with their feet. So that was, that was two, three years ago. Since then, we've been sort of thinking through, yeah, but how do we want to take the next step? And I would say in earnest, we got started in defining the API, Louis, November last year, I think. November, yeah, November, December last year. Um, where we said, you know what, the timing is right. We have all the components that this makes sense. Yeah, there's a lot of um, self-righteousness, I guess, you gotta give up when you like, just completely just expose all the data possible. You know, people are gonna go through that data and they're gonna, you know, nitpick like, oh, your retention dipped here. That means that this update was slightly worse and uh, you should probably nerf the gun or something. Like, you know, there's gonna be people like that, people like me, but but there was a sense of, you know, confidence, I guess, that, you know, we take our losses, we take our wins too, which I can really admire, I guess. I'm pretty sure they talk about later on about if you can choose if you want to show it or not, and they say you can't. So even if you don't want like it, you're going to have to deal with it. Every single data is all available for everybody. It just makes it fair, I guess. The next question asked was, will the API be backwards looking or will it only start in June? Yeah, I think for the time being, we're gonna, what we're trying to optimize for is this to be really lightweight, really quick and give a nice pulse of what is happening in the ecosystem at a point in time. Um, I think uh, we're considering what it would take to go back a year, go back two years. I think that's not part of the, 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 the immediate plans though, but uh, really trying to optimize for yeah, anything real time here. Uh, we're also specifically designing it as an API so that if you do want to stop 
aggregating this information and keeping track over time and building a database of this is how it's evolved over the course of the next month, two months, three months. You can do that and we're, we're encouraging you to, to do so. So yeah, Epic are more looking at the future rather than trying to just get the data from before. The next question that was asked was, is there any plans to integrate third-party APIs, like using a different third-party API to show a leaderboard? It, it's conceivable, yeah. I think there's a, there's a very, it's not, it hasn't been a focus and a lot of it has to do with security, obviously. That, that we run our servers and our servers run in a very lockdown mode for a lot of different reasons. It's an obvious attack vector. We try to stay away from it. That said, what we have we have discussed, um, like for example, like like content libraries, um, somehow finding out a way to federate access to content libraries and stuff like that. But like general API access, like through some sort of port opening, no, I I think that's very that's very unlikely we could do that at scale just because of the yeah. security concerns. So yeah, this makes sense. Um, one of the big reasons why a lot of features haven't been added still yet to UEFN is because of security concerns. Like Epic are trying to be careful on what they expose to us because they might expose different parts of Fortnite that are sensitive and I don't want being exposed and so this is just kind of with a philosophy. Next question that came up is will there be any first party platforms to show this data? We consider that too. Um, I think that the sequence that we took here is to say the most flexible and the most powerful way that we can expose this is to ship this out as an API and have people interpret this in the way that they want to, to, to use it. Um, I think building it, building something ourselves, I think we could consider it if we see enough appetite there and we see enough demand there. So far, uh, I'm not getting that signal, uh, but uh, uh, it's something that, that we, we definitely can consider. Uh, like the amount of followers like, that we had not too long ago, and within a day, it's up and, and reflected in in the stats on, on, on Fortnite GG. And I just doubt we can be as fast and as useful. Which is true. I don't think it's really necessary for a first party platform by Epic uh, to show this data. I think websites like Fortnite GG are pretty reliable in doing it, though some of the monetization like estimates are a bit off, but you know what I mean. Anyways, the next question that was asked is, will we see impressions, CTR, survey responses as public in the future? I think in general, we want to make a distinction between um, what uh, serves the ecosystem immensely in terms of engagement and what uh, an individual island or an individual creator would see about their island in a, a creator portal, for example. We don't want to kind of mechanically go down the road of every insight that exists in the creator portal now is public as well. We do want to keep that, that distinction because we think some of the information is a bit closer to, uh, to, to how you reported in the game design group game design loop works or uh, a little closer to, to, to the actual uh, creative processing. Which is pretty good because some data is pretty fine to show to the public, but other ones are a bit more, you know, personal and only for the creator themselves to see. So I think that distinction is very good to make. The next question asked was, will we ever see origin based segment level data? Yeah, that's what we're, we're hearing a lot of. Um, so how exactly that segmentation work? Is it per tag? Is it per region? Is it per platform? How that segmentation works? Something we have to figure out. Uh, we're hearing a lot of that and we realize that that's a pretty core component of understanding what the shape of the ecosystem is like um, to understand what your audience looks like, what you've got optimized for. So uh, yeah, it's, it's something that we're um, that we're. Uh, so yeah, it's cool to know this too. Different countries and even different places in the Fortnite ecosystem. It would be nice to know what those certain kinds of player bases play. Next question was, what do you hope to see out of this API? I hope to see like new genres um, spring up that, that I think will be really successful in, in, in Fortnite because we've seen like a few attempts at it here and there, but it kind of sprung up and died off. But I think there's genres that are, that are big opportunity that lie away from like sort of core that way out gameplay um, that our players are responding very strongly to. It's just difficult to see it, because, but you should be able to see it now. So I think I hope to hear from, from creators like in, in a couple of months time that we, we, we expanded what we do now because we, we feel like we can invest in making this awesome, whatever it is. Like I'm not going to say a genre because I don't, don't want to look like a fool here, um, but like random genre they were passionate about, but they just didn't know if it was going to work. And before, before getting some signal, it's, it's hard to commit development resources and spend your time doing it. You know me, I'm a pioneer for the story side of things, all right? Since I've been creating, I've took the leap of faith to make story maps. Has it worked well for me? There's mixed results, but I haven't stopped and I'm not going to stop anytime soon, especially in categories that are really low in Fortnite that are, people don't usually play. Again, what people like is very subjective. I think ultimately at the end of the day, I want to build a subsect of the Fortnite creative community that really likes story maps. And I want to make it more viable and possible for other people to do that too, and for audiences to be able to find that content also. It's not about pleasing the already made player base, it's about getting other people into Fortnite. Because if there's anything Fortnite is missing right now, it's story. Now, you don't have to be like me, you don't have to be <laughs> die hard, but you can, you can, you know, you can do whatever you like. Just I think these APIs will open up a lot of more opportunities for people to be more confident in expanding the genres of Fortnite. So that's kind of the end of the API questions for now. Next questions are more for the Discover documentation that was released yesterday. And if you want to know more about that, just watch my other video I released yesterday about how Discover works. But I guess the first question would be, do propons or spectators count as I players so it, it essentially if you do any action in that minute that minute counts and the next minute counts so it ends up being 
that you can like any anything you do in like within a couple of minutes will make you count. And when you do an action, you immediately count again. Um, so it is it's meant for being truly AFK, like for for just like XP farming or, or that sort of thing. Um, it, it is meant to it's meant to capture any action you do inside the Fortnite client that it doesn't have to be a game specific action will will make you active again. You know, I don't really have much to say about this. It makes sense. Anyways, the next question was: Do maps that don't get into any rows still get the fifty thousand impressions and are search impressions counted? They yes, just, they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's a like it's not like you press publish and it immediately gets fifty thousand. It goes into a queue and then within the next x number of hours days it'll it'll go through and you will see them discover like that's why we wanted to create a portal because you don't we want it to be known when that test happened and how it happened so that that's one if you have uh followers like as a creator uh then like it'll appear much sooner in the new from like new and updated or from creators you follow the primary way that people will, will like see your new content as a established creator will most likely be followers of your content right? and we've been we've been talking to you i guess we've rolled it out and people have been growing a follow account and asking them what do you see different when you publish a new island now and the biggest difference is that they get players much much earlier than, than they used to so again one of the most important things in Fortnite creative are followers and for your favorite creator the more followers you have the more players you'll have when your game launches and that early player boost will really help in discover and making sure that your map is seen i guess the next question that came up is will ratings on islands be public in the future I, we want there to be some qualitative rating to be active, yes. I think what's really difficult about like ratings is like looking at comparables, um, like uh, like other places where content is rated and where ratings are public. They converge on a very, very tight band, um, generally, like, like that's just kind of what happens. And if they're public, then the solicitation for ratings um, like distorts it quite dramatically, like really fast. So we're trying to find a way that, like right now, we I think we, we, we ping every, on an average, every 100 plays or something like that to ask people if they had a good time and ask specific questions, and we pull them up. Um, like behind the scenes, we've we've tried to toy with like how could we represent that in a way that, that helps people make better decisions. We haven't we haven't come up with exactly how we want to do that. That doesn't incentivize uh, something we don't know how to curb again. It's a long way to say we want it. We don't have the perfect solution yet. Yeah. Hope within like the not too distant future that'll be that'll be qualitative, not just quantitative. Like CCU is just a quantitative way to say a lot of people are here. It doesn't say anything about, but they came here because of like, bait. You know what I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> like if we could if we could marry those two things together, I think it'd be much better. Because yeah, I think ratings. I, I I used to want ratings, but now I kind of don't because I feel like I feel like they're probably going to be. Much not very good at you know if you want to compare an island to another island it's not going to be very accurate to the quality of that island compared to that quality of that island because the player base of that island could be completely different and couple like completely different things that's why they probably public favorites instead because kind of like youtube with likes um that more just shows how much people like it instead rather than uh how much they rated it out of five or something anywho the next question was do you have an update on when real-time data is going to be available yeah uh, no timeline to, to announce uh, today but uh, it's actively being being worked through at the moment i think uh, again back to back to api we want to get to that level of granularity where we starting to pump out uh, 10 minute intervals now and hour intervals whereas up until now your signal has been on a day level and we want to try and carry as much as we can there on the creative portal not only from the insights that are out with the api but also all the other insights that you have in the creative portal that, that actually don't uh, so yeah i'm pretty sure websites like fortnite.gg work on like a 10 minute basis so it every 10 minutes updates and the creative portal is mostly every single day i think next question was what are the rate limits on the api um, first off, the API will tell you when it hits the rate limit, so uh, you'll, you'll learn that pretty quickly. Uh, but I think if memory serves, it's something around like a, a, a 100 requests a second or something like that. Uh, I'd have to double check though. Uh, but uh, the, the the short answer here is we specifically designed this in a way where you can hit it extremely frequently in a way that you can pull all information from all maps and not have to worry about rate limitations getting in the way. Uh, so uh, so uh, hopefully hopefully that, that, that covers the need there. Uh, but I'll get back to you on the exact number. So yeah, so if you're if you're wanting to take from this Fortnite API, that's, that's some information about the rate limits. The next question was how how will we know if the discover docs get updated? We always update the article. Yeah, like any material changes will like should be updated. Yes, that's the that's the goal. So yeah, pretty close to a clear answer there. Anyways, the next question was how will this affect big creators and small creators? I don't think the needs are different from big creators and small creators in that if, if you're just mildly curious or you you're like a one person creator versus a like a larger creator, like, like the, the questions you have about like, how to be successful and how to build what you want to build and how to find the players that would like your content, I think it's the same. Like they're fundamentally the same. How do we see it developing? Like I, I would imagine that that we will find useful insights that that we will include into the API over time. That said, like a, a, a goal is not to release a new like a new variable every week or anything like that. Like the goal is to is to is to focus on the stability and the speed of it, uh, and then have useful things come come in, but not by sort of dribbling it out. And like at all times, we don't think that's necessary. Like I think the, there's only there's a finite amount of insights and and, and data that, that we use ourselves for operating battle royale that gives us a pretty good insight into what we can do. And from a create like and, and these are ecosystem wide. Um, data, right? Like you still have the stats device as an individual creator. I think what you're going to see is like pushing hard is to increase your in-island understanding of your particular game. Um, 
and the sophistication of, of, of you understanding player behavior on your island yourself. Like we're going to focus on that. Um, so the data API is for broad ecosystem insights, stats devising and, uh, and uh, create a portal are both for like your individual island and your individual business and your individual focus. Now, of course, I think they overlook the the point that these are these metrics and everything, you can really optimize your islands with it, okay? And for bigger teams out there, they have a lot more manpower to optimize than let's say little old Joe over there, not, not Joe Pavroni. And I guess it really comes down to um, how smart you use this API and all these new new stats and everything to really, really improve and really get that retention up. Because again, uh, if you haven't seen my Discover video, retention is very important to getting into very big categories. You need at least like 25% retention, which is a quarter of your players coming back uh, day to day to be in those tabs, which isn't easy to get. I gotta be honest, it is pretty hard to get that. And having all these stats will be very helpful to be reaching that and, uh, you know, maybe making your islands better to be able to play. Also, what help is better Discover systems on the audiences that you want to get better retention rates because then you have players that actually want to come back and play the map that you've made in different genres that may not have as much retention as let's say before all this uh you know recommendations came through and the last question for this video are are there any plans to expose accolades or other data to the api not uh, not immediately but it's something that i'll take back to, to 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 think through what would be a use case there that would be beneficial for like ecosystem wide sharing versus, versus zero that, that's really the balance every single time it's like hmm. is there value at an ecosystem level for everyone to understand these or are we going deeply now into something that has high value to a specific creator and their design but not so much to, to an ecosystem that's so yeah, that's pretty much just going back to the point you said earlier about some data is good for public data, but other ones kind of, you kind of don't really have to expose it. it. It's just it's just fine if the creator themselves see it. What we see like as a closing thing, like what makes strong games in Fortnite is iteration. Like it's rare, so rare that a game comes out and right off the bat has like 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 banging statistics. But like over time, like it's really where where you make your mark. Um, and I think that's like this. It's very much gained towards like can I make that next iteration? Do I know what I want to do next? Am I doing it? Do I feel informed? As I, as, I, as I try to put in these new retention mechanics or whatever it is, like does it move the needle? Um, I think that's the that's our goal. It's, it's like people invest in the iterations because really, from a player perspective, that's where success lies. Which, as a closing statement, is very true. Iteration is probably one of the most important things for a creative. Stuff like that is very important if you want to be have success and also have that highest sophistication score uh, because updates, you know, up that up a little bit. Well, anyways, that's it for the video. To write this live stream, I don't think it was as good as, let's say, the other two they did uh, because there wasn't as many, like, you know, groundbreaking stuff announced or whatever. But this was a pretty nice little stream to about the about all the different data they're going to be introducing to the ecosystem, etc, etc. So yeah, remember to like, subscribe, use my code in the front of Amshop. shop. Uh, thank you to all the members of the channel for all your support and also watch all these videos for my news uh, content that's about it i'll see y'all around